Mac Voices is sponsored by Mint Mobile. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it's been a little while, probably since WWDC, that we really dug into a little bit of hardcore developer talk uh, or softcore developer talk, depending on where you're coming from. Uh, so I want to get back to that uh, by talking to Kelly Gamont about a new gig she's doing. Kelly, welcome. It's great to see you. Hi, Chuck. I'm really glad to be back with you and talking more about development because I don't think we've chatted since Dub Dub, as a matter of fact. So yeah, this is I, fun. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I lose I, honestly, Kelly. I lose track. Um, but but <laughs> I I know that this is this is something uh, a new hat you're wearing this time around. Yeah. You're doing marketing for Elements by Rem Objects, and yeah. so I guess my first question as a non-developer is, what is Elements? So Elements is. Um, uh, there, there's a couple ways to sort of go about it. It kind of depends on what you want to talk about. But there's uh, three pieces to uh, the development IDE, the, the elements IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Platform. So Xcode, for example, is an IDE that lots of people probably have at least a familiarity with the concept of Xcode. Like it's a place where you type your stuff in and you get all your code laid out. And then at the end it will compile into an app for macOS or an app for iOS. And, you know, as we saw, this is getting easier all the time with stuff that Apple's doing to give you the frameworks to make those things happen. And uh, what happens with Elements is that there's uh, an, an, uh, the, the sort of Xcode piece of it that you think of called Fire, which is the Mac version that runs completely natively on macOS. And then there's uh, um, Water, Excuse me. With uh, water is the Windows version of the same thing. So you open it up and you put in the code that you want to. You know, you choose your template and you fill in the code so that you get an app that does what you want to do, and then you can compile that. Now the magic that comes into play is the Elements compiler. So with the Elements compiler, it will take whatever code project you've given it because everything sort of works as a project. And it will take the project that you give it and turn it into something else. So if you mostly write Swift, for example, and you want to create an Android app, then you can take the Swift code that you took, that you, that you've already created in your iOS version, and you can take most of that. And if you add sort of the, the Android template for a very basic app, then you can run that compiler and it will show up as an Android app and you can run it in the Android simulator and click on things and, and do Um, all the sorts of things that you would normally do. And you don't really have to learn a whole lot of Java in order to create that Android app. And the opposite is true. So if you wanted to, if you already have an Android app and you want to create a a Mac, an iOS app, then you can take that and put it into a template for a Swift, for an iOS project. And you can run your compiler. And then at the end of it, you'll end up with an iOS app. So this is what, the, the thing that's great about it Um, like I said, the magic of it is the compiler. And this works for a number of languages and a number of platforms. And that's the part that makes it interesting. So for example, suppose you built an iOS app and now you want to update it, but things have happened and now your main computer is a Windows machine. You can just download the Water IDE and open up your project and start working on it and export your iOS app. Even if you don't have a Mac, you can still manage to write apps for iOS. Well, not only for iOS, but I mean, what you're describing is something that this will help developers go across all the platforms. It it won't solve all their problems, it sounds like, but it will solve a lot of them. And, you know, now, I mean, it's it's, it's so important, I think, to have that cross-compatibility. You and I are definitely focused on the Mac and iOS platforms Mm -hmm. because this is Mac Voices, of course. Um, But at the same time, not blind. You know, there are Android users out there. There are even the dreaded Windows users that, you know, are (laughs) looking for some of the tools. And this way, a developer can work on one and then I, I guess is it is this a, could you think about this as a porting tool or is this primarily a creation tool um it will do both and one of the things that I like about it um and 
I will say a lot of my knowledge has come from helping to create videos for people to see uh, to see these ideas in action. So sometimes like it's nice to hear me talk about it, but it's also nicer if I can sort of narrate it for you and then you can watch it happen on the screen. So there is a, a page on the REM Objects website. You can go to remobjects.com slash TV and watch a number of videos there. And uh, so when I say I can tell you more about them as it happens on the screen, it's because my voice is the audio track on all of those videos. So you literally get to hear me tell you about what's happening as it happens. Um, so the, it, is, it is for both. One of the things that I remember in one of the example videos is that there's a, uh, say you build a weather app and you build it and you, you, write the, you write the weather app, but you make a JSON call out to a web server somewhere that holds a bunch of weather data and you ask it for uh, the weather conditions in all these cities. And then you get back that piece of information, you display it on your I in your iOS app. Well, you can create a real basic template for Android and use that exact same JSON code that you already built, that you already created. You don't have to change anything at all and put that, you know, share that code between both of those projects. And then suppose you want to make a Mac app, you just share it with that project too. You want to make a Windows app, you share it with that project too. And then you can take all of that and uh, when you compile, you're using that same piece of code over and over again. You didn't have to build it again for the Mac version, build it again for the Windows version, build it again for mobile if, if you, know, you were building something desktop in the first place. Um, if you've got that piece of code that functions the way you want it to, you can just keep using it again, sort of like a Lego brick. Okay. So what I'm hearing is that this is a development environment and this is not something that, um, in other words, by building your app with this, uh, where I'm trying to go with this is where, by building your app using these tools, you're not locked into just using these tools. Correct. You could, you could go back and recode it or fix it or whatever in a different environment if you wanted to. This mm -hmm. just facil facilitates the development. Exactly. And if you um, and when you create, like once you've created something and you're applying it, you can uh, you can take that somewhere else. So if it turns out that uh, now you have a Mac and you want to go back to the Mac, you can switch between the Windows version. Um, you know, you can switch between Fire and Water if you want to. Or if there's something that you need to do that you want to make sure it works 100% in Xcode, you can send it to Xcode and import all of that, and you know that should all be that should all be fine as well. So because it uses all the same libraries and things, so all of the stuff that's that's available to you if you're using Xcode is all stuff that's available to you if you're using um, Fire as well, and that does include like UI Kit, like we saw it at Dub Dub um, Project Catalyst. I keep wanting to call it Marzipan, and I know that's not the name of it anymore. But um, Marzipan, all of the UI kit stuff with the declarative frameworks, uh, that's all stuff that's supported by Fire in the Elements IDE. So that's all stuff that, that you have access to just like you would if you were using Xcode. I'm, I'm not a developer, but I, I, I think I, I find that it has to be as important to developers as it is to the rest of us. When you're, when you're putting data into a system, it's equally important to be able to get it back out and move it over to a new system, environment, tool, whatever. Um, I, I see this with, with web publishing. I see this, and, and of course, I mean, this is not my best example, but I'll do it anyway. But I know people that built some really snazzy graphics in Fireworks from Adobe, and when that stopped working or they su dropped support, well, you really couldn't go much, uh, go anywhere with that. And so they had to yeah. go somewhere and try to just rebuild from scratch. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm just a huge proponent of, you know, okay, there needs to be a standard kind of in and a standard kind of out. Um, you know, if you can't get everything out, well, that's all right, but you should be able to get the majority of it out. And it sounds like that's not an issue here. It's not. Um, and I, like you, I agree as a person who has used a number of web tools for various things that have gone away or, um, you know, iOS apps that were supposed to contain some sort of data and then having the app come to an end for one reason or another, you know, whether it was benevolent, benevolent, why can't I talk today? Whether it was benevolent neglect or it was just plain out neglect or, uh, the service came to an end or we couldn't afford to keep the servers running anymore. So your data doesn't sync. So you're done here, you know, uh, whatever it is, 
there's um, there's a whole lot of portability that's really important to me. And so like you, you know, and this is, you know, a project that's written in code. So you get, you know, if you've written your, your pile of Swift code, you get to take it with you or your pile of Java, you know, because it's in it, because you, you started out building for Android. And so you're building Android apps and that's what you're most familiar with. You can still take that stuff with you. And that's part of what, what's great about it. And the other thing that, that I really like about it is, um, you know, I told you it was a magical compiler. It compiles for um, uh, Mac apps or Windows or um, iOS or Android. So it will do all of those things. Uh, so if you really like to develop in Object Pascal, for example, which is a, pro- which is a language that's supported by Elements, uh, you can do that. And if you want to build your iOS apps using that, you can do that you know, there's, there's ways to make that happen. So it's one of those things where like, I'm a Windows user, or I'm an Android developer, and I don't know how to get started. Well, take your existing Android stuff and put it in elements, get a feel for elements. Once you figure out how the tools work, then it's really easy to just add the shared project of the iOS app. And then there you go. And it doesn't, it, the hurdle to create that iOS app, if you already have the existing Android app is very small, just like it's very small to go the other way as well. And that's a good thing for, for everybody. I mean, for the developers, because they obviously, if they can hit multiple platforms, it make well, it means they have different products to sell to those platforms, but it also means their marketing can be more effective because um, they can, you know, market through a, a given neutral channel, if you will. They don't have to just market through an Android channel or a Windows channel or a Mac channel or an iOS channel. And that, it's, I don't think a lot of times people understand that there are business reasons sometimes for doing these kind of things as well as developer reasons. That's totally true. And I think part, you know, a part of what goes into that is sometimes familiarity. Um, I only know Swift and I only ever developed for iOS. So that's all I know. So there's, a, that's why there's no Android app or, um, I don't have time to learn a new language or I don't have time to, I don't have the time or the money or the resource, whatever other resources to hire an Android developer to help create an Android version of the thing that I've gotten Swift. Um, you know, those things all come into play. And so having something like this where you get the opportunity to try it out for yourself is even better. And here's the thing about um, another interesting thing about fire in particular, I mean, fire and water, both as far as the elements IDEs go. But um, if you want to use it to write Swift code, that's free. So as far as the licensing goes, you can download it and write Swift, write a fully functioning Swift app, and uh, that costs you nothing in order to get to try out the uh, try out the tool, try out you know Fire if you're on a Mac, uh, which most people I would imagine listening to this are, uh, or if you're on uh, if you have a Windows machine and you want to try it there, you can get the Water IDE, and uh, like I said, the magic is in the compiler, so you can write whatever code you want to write within it, and the Swift. Uh, the the Swift piece of that uh, requires no license and costs no money. Oh, that's interesting. But you but you don't get the compiler for free. You do get to compile, but you can't compile oh. for anything but iOS. Like you can only build it into into um, Swift apps. So um, what I will tell you is that if people are interested and want something else, um, you, the illustrious Chuck Joiner. Um, have a discount code of Mac Voices, which gets people 20% off the licenses if they want it for other stuff. Ooh, thank you. Thank you. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, developers, you, you, since I'm illustrious now, I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> please, please go and, and check that out. I'm breaking so, all I, kinds I, of news today. Yeah, really. And <laughs> I, sh- you know, I mean, we should ask because, again, a lot of us don't have a frame of reference for developer tools. Is this mm-hmm. is this a, a $10 thing? Is this $100? Is it a $1,000 um, project or a tool? I mean, what, what kind of price range are we talking about? Uh, if you want, um, if you want full on elements, um, it is $7.99. And that's for a year of updates and tech support and everything. Um, and the twenty percent off coupon makes that uh, six forty, six thirty nine, six forty, right in there. Six hundred forty. Six hundred forty nine dollars. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's be sure. Six hundred forty dollars a year. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, if you want just uh, one language, if you just want it for Android or something like that, uh, then that's five ninety nine for a year, and then that comes out to be uh, four seventy nine with the discount. Okay. 
So these, I mean, these are for like, I, I was joking about hardcore software developers and all, but these are for people that are earning their living with their apps um, at, or aspire to. And, you know, if, if you are at that level, then you want to be, be developing a cross platform. And that's why you should go and check this out. Mm hmm. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it's it's a really interesting tool. That's part of how I got started with the company. And, uh, and, and what I really like about it is being able to share stuff across projects, like the weather app that I talked about. Um, with the weather app, you know, you can use that same piece of code over and over again. So if you do decide to make a Mac version, you know, you can. And, you know, we've always seen sort of... Um, uh, your your input and your output have to match, right? So if you build an Xcode, you really only have two choices, and they're both Apple choices. You can either build for you can either build a macOS app or you can build an iOS app, and that's it. You can't build an Android app in Xcode. You, it it isn't done, you know, um, because it's only Swift, and you can only you know, and with with I think it's called Android Studio. Um, with Android Studio, you can only use Java, and you can only output an Android app. You know, you can't build Windows apps in Android Studio. And with um, with Visual Studio, you can't build Mac apps, you know, which is a, a Windows IDE that people use to build Windows apps. Like now with Elements, um, you can pick the language that you want to use. So I, I know Swift and I have this great app and I want to make a Windows version. You can do that now because the compiler uncouples those two things. So you can have whatever language you wanted to use and then additionally have uh, whatever platform you want to put it on. And you can pick and choose how those fit together. I'm happy to introduce you to Mint Mobile as the newest sponsor of Mac Voices. If you're still using one of the big wireless providers in 2019, have you asked yourself what you're paying for? Between expensive retail stores, inflated prices, and hidden fees, you're being taken advantage of because they know you'll pay. Enter Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile provides the same premium network coverage you're used to, but at a fraction of the cost, because everything is online. Mint Mobile saves on retail locations and overhead, then passes those savings directly to you. I've been using Mint Mobile now for several weeks, and have been very satisfied with the coverage and the quality of service. I don't miss the carrier I was using before, and I certainly don't miss the bills. Mint Mobile makes it easy to cut your wireless bill down to just 15 bucks a month. Every plan comes with unlimited nationwide talk and text. And with Mint Mobile, you can stop paying for unlimited data you'll never use. Choose between plans with 3, 8, or 12 gigabytes of 4G LTE data. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Ditch your old wireless bill and start saving with Mint Mobile. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash macvoices. That's mintmobile.com slash macvoices. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash macvoices. And a big thanks and welcome to Mint Mobile as a sponsor of Mac Voices. Okay, so how about if we we shift it around? If I'm uh, if I'm um, a Windows developer and I've developed a Windows app and I decide I wanted to want to get it over to iOS or to the Mac, it's uh, I can I can feed my code in there. The compiler does its thing. It's I mean, it sounds like the compiler is the lingua franca here that that yes. makes everything talk to everything else. Yes, the compiler. I I keep calling it magical, but it's because I don't know how to talk about low level code and how how compilers work. I haven't spent a ton of time with compilers. Um, so to me, it looks like magic that I can write something in Swift and go make an Android app. And now in the simulator menu, there's, an, there's a line for Android and it will pop up a little Android phone and show me my app on Android. And that's literally what happens in the video. I'm not giving anything away. I totally tell you at the beginning, that's what's happening. So, um, that's exactly what happens. And, you know, if you want to build uh, one of the other demo videos is using water, which is the Windows version, and building a Mac OS app. And you go down and there's Mac, you know, Mac OS suddenly appears in the compiler and you get a little MacBook screen, you know, with your app on it. And it's really great because uh, it keeps things like, you know, well, I'm a Windows user and that's why I started developing it. Uh, you know, Android apps because that was the only the only tool I had available to me because I can't put Xcode on my Windows machine. Like that hurdle is removed. Or 
um, if you have an iOS version and all, you know, and your number one feature request is all my Android friends are really jealous of this app and I want to, you know, and I would really like if there was an Android version so my friends could all use this same app with me, you know, you, if you are that person, you have that opportunity now. And that's part of what I think is the most interesting about it is that it frees up uh, the, the, the output. So your finished product can be whatever it is that you want it to be and wherever you want it to be. Under different circumstances, I would ask if we could uh, get permission to insert a couple videos here, but I think I'm just going to send folks to the, to the website uh, because that's that way they can watch all of them. They can watch them over and over easily and hear your narration explaining what it is because I'm not going to, wouldn't even pretend to try to narrate these. So, um, but, but yeah, if folks, if you're, first of all, if you're a developer, definitely this, if I were a developer, this would excite me just because of now my ability to move beyond my platform of choice. Um, but if you're also, if you're, if you're one of those who are interested in how apps get made, and I think we all should be at some level because these things, I mean, these things are running our lives now and I'm, I'm trying to learn just a little more about coding. I'm never going to be a, a professional coder and you know, that's just, that's not going to happen because I have too many other interests in other directions, but it, I, I do like to understand a little bit of it and I'm getting better. And even this has helped me understand a few things that I really didn't appreciate before. Well, I'm glad I could help. You know, I, I have a soft spot in my heart for helping people down that development path. So yeah. Well, and, we're, <laughs> and we're seeing, you know, we're seeing Apple advance the idea that, you know, get, getting everybody to code, kids to code, mm-hmm. especially um, yeah. because, you know, it's their world and they're not cluttered up with all the ideas that you and I have and all the, all the cobwebs of mm-hmm. past technologies. They're, they're a clean slate. So um, yeah. this is probably not a, not a kid's thing, but on the other hand, yeah. you know, if in, in the right hands, who knows? Exactly. And, and what I really like about this is the, the potential. And it's part of, it, it's part of what excited me about like UI kit and finding out about, um, you know, when people were really excited about declarative frameworks, finding out a little bit about what those are. And then um, from my developer friends and then finding out what that meant. And really what it means is that it sort of used to be a hockey stick of learning um, in order, you know, you know, it wasn't a curve. It was kind of a hockey stick in order to take something for iOS and make it a Mac OS app and project catalyst or marzipan or, you know, whatever it ends up, whatever, whatever you refer to it as, um, you know, the thing that Apple did that made it so that Xcode has a much easier time turning an iOS app into a Mac OS app. Um, that's another thing where like, I don't know the nuts and bolts of what makes that work, but I could see the potential in what made that great, you know, and starting to think about like the stuff I have on my phone that I love very much that I wish I had a Mac counterpart for, uh, not, not an equivalent, but like a counterpart so that both of those pieces work together, like drafts, for example, you know, having drafts on Mac OS and on iOS and having the opportunity to do some of those things on both my platforms, you know, my mobile platform and my my desktop, which I have to air quote because I have a laptop as my as my full on desk computer, but having the opportunity to uh, expand out in whatever direction that is, whether it's Windows apps or Mac apps or Android apps, you know, if you're building stuff for iPhone already, and being able to have a speed bump instead of a mountain of learning that you have to do in order to be able to create that new thing and then get it out there into the world is really exciting. And the potential for that is the thing that I really like. I'm so tempted to take us down a big discussion rat hole, and I'm not going to, but I'm not one of those that feels like iOS apps should live over here and Mac apps should live over there and never the twain should meet. I I mean, there are obviously things that because of the very nature of of what you're doing or the interfaces, they work better on one or the other. Sometimes it's just different. But I, I, I lo- so that that's another thing here that really appeals to me. That some, a developer, a developer of a favorite app of mine, might be able to give me how did you say it? A desktop, not equivalent, but a desktop compatible a counterpart. Version. Yeah, counterpart, a counterpart. A counterpart. Yeah, yeah. Great word. Great word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the website is Rem Objects. R E M O B J E C T S. Remobjects.com. 
And if you go to remobjects.com slash TV, that's where the videos live. And you can also find them on YouTube, but um, they're nicely laid out on the page and you can see them and you don't end up with weird suggestions down the side to distract you down a crazy rabbit hole um, if you do it from the site instead of from YouTube. Yeah. And, and so folks, go and check this out. I mean, again, if you're a developer, absolutely check it out. It may be an answer to problems you've been having or may provide new opportunities. And if you're just an end user, a little more like me, go check it out anyway, because I think it's interesting to see how this stuff works and, and what happens uh, before that app lands on your Mac or your iPhone or whatever device you use. Mm-hmm. Can we thank you? This uh, educational, interesting. Um, I know that you know this this particular edition of Mac Voices isn't for everybody, but I, I, <laughs> I hope it. I hope it will be because I, I I think people should have a little curiosity about this stuff. Yeah, and thanks so much for having me on to talk about it. I really, uh, I I really do see a lot of interesting potential there, and I always love to see what uh, people who use Elements are working on and what what kind of projects they are and what that stuff looks like. So yeah, if you, and if you are like that super duper object Pascal fan and you didn't realize that there was an opportunity for you to keep using that, Hey, I'm here to tell you, uh, you can use the elements IDE to make that, to, to take the programming that you have and turn it into something really cool. You know, that's a good point that we didn't cover. I didn't even think about that, that, you know, computer language just kind of fall in and out of favor or for whatever reason. And this would be a way to maybe bring something a little bit older into the modern world, or at least keep it alive for a while. Mm -hmm. Huh. And if you, you, like, if you did learn Java for some reason, you know, that still can be something super relevant because you can develop mobile apps with that. Um, It will also support C sharp and um, oxygen, which is object Pascal. Uh, It supports both of those. So like if you are, you know, hardcore visual studio because you've written stuff in C sharp, for all this time, like you can take that and uh, and pretty easily turn it into something for iOS as a, a viable, you know, you know, with like defending how far down you go into frameworks and things, you should be able to take something and and pretty if it's not a super duper complex app, it's very, very easy to turn it into something uh, that you can run on an iPhone or even on a Mac. Kelly, I don't have time to become a developer. And you're slowly dragging me in that direction. <laughs> I've been t- dragging you in that direction for a long time, Chuck. You know that. I know, and and I and and, and I get enthused about it, and then and then life intervenes, and then I got to go back and relearn a few things. So I feel like I'm two steps forward, one step back. But I'm working on it. I'm working. I on know. It. I know, and I can't wait to be a guest on the podcast that you are going to inevitably start about your journey into development. <laughs> uh Right now I'm doing two. That's enough for a little while, but you know, we'll see. You, you, you never know. You never know. Well, if you hey, break thanks. Trek favorites into seasons and then you took a break and in the off season from Trek favorites, you were doing this developer one. And, and, and Mac voices just at the same time. Well, you're doing Mac voices all the time. Like, yeah, well, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Okay. You're not helping Kelly. <laughs> I need, I need to that's sleep. The idea, Chuck. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hey, thanks so much. And, and thank you for, uh, for bringing this to our attention. Um, you know, really appreciate it. And for the developers out there, you know, please check it out. And, and for the rest of you, I hope you got a little something out of this. And remember, Can there's we... a discount before, before we yes. leave. I, just want to remi- I want to remind everybody that if you enter Mac Voices, all one word, uh, the case doesn't matter. As long as it's Mac Voices at checkout, you will get 20% off your license. And uh, and the Swift uh, the Swift piece is free, so if you just want to use Swift, you can download it and check it out and see what you think. Great. So, folks, if you do check it out, if you do decide to develop apps with it, or just enjoy checking it out, let me know what you think, or or let Kelly what you know what you think, because uh, we definitely would be interested in seeing your journey, not my journey, but your journey into programming. Kelly, thanks. We will do it again about who knows what. <laughs> Well, we've got gift guides coming in a few months, I imagine. So it'll probably be then. (laughs) Uh, At least, at least. (laughs) Thanks so much. Thank you. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Again, this may not have been one of your favorite things, but I, I, I really wish it would be because that's what I like to do. I like to open your eyes to all aspects of the of the Apple tech world. And this sounds like a pretty interesting one. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. 
Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.